Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a upcoming winter storm for portions of the western United States and then going into the north central United States, the Great Lakes, and then eventually portions of the interior northeast. This will be coming out through a period of about 7 to 8 days uh, or so, so it's going to be moving through portions of the southwest, then it should make its way north and eastward into the Great Lakes, and then eventually again it'll move into the northeast. So this is going to be a very uh, long-lasting storm, it'll be again on the radars for about seven to nine days or so so we will be having a lot of time to track this out we do have a couple of moving parts with this system as well. We have another uh, little Alberta clipper, a little ball of en energy that's going to come out of Alberta, Canada, and Saskatchewan, Canada, and that general area, and dip into the northern plains, and that with it will bring colder air and potentially some snow. We have another front that will move across the central United States. If that snow can join up with the front, you might even be able to pump out a couple of inches, maybe even half a foot of snowfall in some portions of the Great Lakes. So we're going to talk about two different models, the GFS and the Euro model, and then we'll look at how much snowfall they're putting out. No official snowfall forecast from me just yet because it is a little bit too far out, uh, but as we get closer to the actual event, we will uh, most likely put out a snowfall forecast. So. Here's the uh, current National Weather Service page. Uh, we see some high wind watches in effect for portions of California and Nevada. We see high wind warnings up uh, for the coasts of Washington and Oregon, as well as some portions in South Central Oregon and Northern California, with some wind advisories generally scattered throughout portions of the Northwest. We also see some more high wind warnings in effect for Southeastern Wyoming. We have some winter weather advisories for portions of northeastern California in the purple, uh, that little dark blue area that's a winter storm watch. And then we have winter uh, storm warnings in effect for northeastern California as well. And other than that, there's not a lot going on in uh, on the National Weather Service's watches and warnings page. So we have a lot to get into here, so let's get right into it. We have, this is the current GFS model and the latest run that came out uh, earlier this afternoon so we have this system that's uh, currently by this point it's kind of right over uh, I would say probably portions of Arizona uh, and New Mexico by this point and it'll transition a little bit further north and east with the next frame you can barely pick it out by this point no real precipitation is associated with it uh, and we're gonna see that energy continue to move north and eastward uh, so let's play this through so this would be by Thursday night so I believe this would be right around 10 p.m. Uh, Pacific time so mountain time that would probably be right around 9 p.m. Uh, mountain time. So we're looking at some of that, uh, some of that uh, energy moving through portions of the southwest. As we continue forward here, uh, we're looking at right around 5 in the morning on Friday, and we're looking at that energy has now transferred over to this low in portions of Colorado and Kansas. We have a little bit of shower activity out behind that front. But as we continue forward throughout the day on Friday, and as we're getting into the uh, evening hours on Saturday, so right, right around 5 p.m. Uh, mountain time, uh, we're looking at some of that rain snow mix especially for the higher elevations you'll probably get into the some of that snow lower elevations uh and the snow levels are going to be quite high with this so it's not going to be as low to the ground as usually you would expect with some of these systems uh so most of the areas that are not highly elevated w should stay uh in the form of rainfall now that system is going to continue uh, to move out ahead of here, and it's going to move into portions of the central plains. We're starting to see some precipitation in the form of rainfall move through the northern plains, maybe some snow mixing in for portions of Colorado and Wyoming. That system is still sitting over portions of Colorado and New Mexico. As we play this forward, it's going to sit back, and it's really just going to let this front do its thing. It's going to just allow this front to move forward and kind of just uh, develop uh, with itself. So it's going to have rain ahead of there, maybe some mixing on the northern side of that in Minnesota and Wisconsin behind the system. You're also going to be seeing some of that snowfall uh, as well once that colder air starts to drape in. And this is also going to be a pattern changer. So this would be by Saturday, by the way. But we're going to see uh, some really cold air actually dive down out behind the system. We have that cold air that's going to be able to be unleashed because of this. Uh, by this point, we would have been in a pattern that's kind of like this where we have a jet stream. It's... <laughs> 
uh, kind of troughing in the western United States, ridging in the eastern United States, and with this system, that trough will continue to move uh, further eastward uh, and further eastward, so eventually, it'll eventually make it, its way to the eastern United States, and we'll probably get into another chillier and colder pattern for those areas, so... Here would be by uh, Saturday, right around noontime, November 21st, and we're looking at uh, some rain and snow mixing for portions of the northern plains, just scattered all over the place. We have r heavier rain out ahead of there, uh, and you can really tell where this front is setting up. We're going to have some gusty winds as well ahead of there, uh, ahead of the system, uh, so your winds will most likely be coming either out of the south or the southwest, so it will be a fairly warm flow, although... On the back end of this, you will start to get into a northwesterly flow, uh, so your winds will start to come out of the northwest and generally out of the north. So here would be uh, by Sunday right around midnight, so this would be 12 a.m. on Sunday, November 22nd. We're seeing a heavy line of precipitation moving through portions of uh, Kansas, uh, Missouri, Iowa, uh, and Wisconsin by this point, and some of that could be some isolated thunderstorm activity, so a general line of heavy uh, rainfall. As we continue through the day on Sunday, this is right around 6 a.m. Central Time. As we get to noon Central Time on Sunday, we're looking at that line of squally activity. So a squall line moving through portions of the central United States that's bringing some of that thunderstorm activity is now starting to move a little bit further eastward. We're starting to see those winds uh kind of move out of the north and northeast in some uh, areas uh, as we get to, again, Sunday right around lunchtime. Uh, we're seeing some of that snowfall draped ahead of, that, uh, ahead of that front and then also kind of on the western side of that front. So on the northern and western side, that's where you're looking at some of that snowfall. As we continue forward here, uh, that system is going to continue to kind of move out to the east, although you're going to get this other system draping behind it. So this is the system that came out of uh, Canada and is now kind of lingering behind this other uh, frontal system. So we're seeing two different systems that are trying to kind of merge together, but uh, this front is a little bit too fast, so it is going to be uh, left behind there. And then it's pretty much all said and done with, except for a couple uh, lingering rain showers for the Northeast as we get to Monday morning. Now, here would be what the European model shows, and we'll probably get a better depiction of what's going to happen. The GFS model has been surprisingly accurate this winter so far so I'm inclined to believe it a little bit more than what the European model has shown so here would be by Friday uh, morning, uh, and we're looking at, uh, this would be November 20th, we're looking at some general precipitation over the four corners. We're then starting to see that energy shift a little bit further to the east. So here would be by November 21st, we're looking at some of that moisture ahead of the front starting to set up over the north central United States. Now as we continue forward, we're starting to see a little bit of mixing on that northern side, although it is mainly rain for many of these regions. And continuing forward, you start to see the system stay over that same area. So uh, a couple of bands of rain just training over the same areas, and then it continues just to stay there. Now what the European model does is it brings a little system, a little ball of energy out of uh, southern Canada that would be right around here, and it just dips it further south and east, but it's not going to be able to join up with this front. The front is carrying a lot of energy with it, so that energy is going to be needed in order to get some sort of bigger storm. So if this cold air and that ball of energy that is associated with some of that cold air does not move further south and east in time to join up with this front, you're not going to see too much in the way of snowfall. You'll still see a couple flurries here and there, but definitely it won't be a 1, 2, 3, or 4 inch accumulation or even more in some scenarios that the GFS was showing. We'll show you the snowfall totals at the end of the video from these models. So, as we head uh, forward on this uh, model run, you start to see that big area of snowfall is still lingering behind. Here would be by Sunday, November 22nd, right around lunchtime. Uh, we see this front well ahead of there uh, that's just kind of sitting over the central United States and then getting into portions of the interior northeast. But look at that system. That was depicted on the GFS model kind of joining up with, uh, the, uh, with that frontal system and joined up a lot more. So that system up to the 
north was able to steal a lot of energy from this frontal system and able to intensify that snowfall and you were able to put out a little bit more snowfall now what you're going to see is that that system is going to again dive south and east but it's not going to have that same energy with it and it's not going to be able to produce as much snowfall and you're going to see that you are going to see the system uh kind of produce light to moderate snowfall maybe a couple of bands of heavier snowfall but it will generally just be a smaller lighter system that's not going to be able to produce too much so as we continue forward it does try to join up as this low pressure system that will be right around here tries to move north and eastward uh, you will have a little bit of time for the system to maybe catch up and that's what the European models try to in trying to do with this system so they kind of join up together as we get to Monday the 23rd of November uh, but really nothing comes out of it the lake effect machines turn on again and you start to see a lot of lake effect snow drive across the Great Lakes uh, but other than that it's not going to be too much in the way of snowfall for many of these regions just maybe some lingering moisture that leads to some lake effect snow so here would be what the European model shows for this event we do see a couple pockets that maybe get up to six inches but that's mainly from lake effect uh, snowfall it's not really from this system you could of course pump out two to three inches in some of these areas especially in northern Wisconsin northern Minnesota maybe parts of North Dakota but it's not going to be to the same magnitude as what the GFS showed and we'll show you that in one moment also notice over portions of the interior and northeast adding to some of those snowfall totals and over portions of the Great Lakes you guys could also see some snowfall uh, and also some that you're not going to get with uh, that system uh, kind of moving later out of portions of southern Canada you're not going to be able to get any snowfall for these regions which some of the other models do show so we'll look at the GFS and the Canadian model snowfall right now so here's what the GFS model shows and you do see a lot more snowfall where that system joined up which was right around here uh, where you saw maybe some areas getting up to 10 inches of snowfall in some scenarios so that's mainly the biggest difference as well you do see a little bit more snowfall for some of these regions in uh, portions of the northern uh, and central United States. Now here to be what the Canadian model is showing and it is fairly similar actually to what the European model was showing uh, except the European model does want to put out more snowfall for this general region. So there's a lot of uncertainty with this system. This is by no means a forecast. This is mainly just me telling you my thoughts on the system and giving you all the data that I'm looking at personally uh, and just telling you what is it might and it might happen according to some of these models and again this is not my forecast i will be issuing my personal snowfall forecast the official one uh probably over the next three or four days i still want to wait for this system to at least move over the southwest or at least form over the four corners area before i want to make a forecast because how strong the system is how fast the system is moving that's all going to make a big difference and i think we're going to get a bigger and a better picture as to what's going to happen as we get to uh, the next, I think, two or three days is going to be crucial into how the system actually ends up playing out. So hopefully you guys did all enjoy this video i will be making daily videos i've already been making daily videos and i hope you guys do enjoy those and i'm going to definitely continue making the daily videos uh and hopefully you guys again do enjoy them if you do make sure that you leave a like turn on notifications and make sure you are subscribed so you never miss another upload and also if you have any questions or comments or you want a personal forecast leave a comment down below i answer all of your comments or i, I at least read all of your comments and you'll know i read your comment by me leaving a little heart icon and if you ask a question in the comment i almost always will answer you with a response so hopefully you guys did all enjoy the video again uh if you did do all of those things like the video subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye